As some of you may know, I completed the acclaimed Chrono Trigger earlier this year. Sadly, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I kept hearing of a game inspired by it. The one I'm reviewing. Well, at first I was a little worried because, as mentioned like literally five seconds ago, I did not enjoy my time with Chrono Trigger. But after seeing some gameplay clips and screenshots, I knew this was the game for me. Everything I wanted out of Chrono Trigger was there, and my excitement level went over the roof. I kept counting down the days until it was released, and I could not put it down. I loved every second of my time with it, and now I can confidently say that this is my favorite turn-based RPG of 2023. This is my spoiler-free review of Sea of Stars. Okay, buckle up. Put y'all seatbelts on. Psh, YOLO. It's time for the wild ride that is Sea of Stars' story. Play as either Valir or Zale. You know, it's really cool that you can play as either character. Two children of the Solstice that are tasked with heading to a cursed island called Wraith Island to save their world from the evil Dweller of Woe. However, once they reach the island, things take a turn for the worse, as now they not only have to defeat the Dweller, but also have to end the Fleshmancer's reign of terror across their world. While it sounds like your typical run-of-the-mill RPG story, Sea of Stars is so much more than that. It can be a little bit predictable at some points, but that's not a bad thing. Having a sense of familiarity to fall back on was welcome during my 30-hour playthrough. Remember in my Final Fantasy X review when I said this? Now, as much as I love the second half of the story, like I just said, it's the first half that's a slog. It seems this happens to be in almost every RPG I play, where the first half sucks, then the second half is amazing. Well, that actually didn't apply here. I know it's shocking, and I'm just as shocked by it too, but it's true. From beginning to end, I loved every bit of Sea of Stars' vast story. From the very start where you play as two kids who just want to explore a cave, to the very end where you fight the final boss in a spooky lair was just perfect. Well, not everything was quote unquote perfect. I hated the ending. While I won't spoil anything here, the ending was just abrupt and felt very out of place. And before anyone asks, yes, I did do the true ending and I felt the exact same way. Actually, I felt more confused than I was the normal ending, but that's a story for a different day. But that's just the main story. How are the side quests in Sea of Stars? Well, dear viewer, I'd say they're awesome. I normally try to complete as many side quests as I can in video games, so I can say from experience that a lot of them have practically the same ones. Defeat an enemy, go get an item, you know, your stereotypical stuff. But while Sea of Stars does have those things like collecting all 60 rainbow conches, which I painstakingly did and it took me almost three hours straight even while looking at a guide, it also contains other unique side quests like playing a game with a talking pot. No, literally, here he is in his glory. Another fun side quest I tortured myself with, I mean loved doing, was playing and defeating all the champions of Wheels. Wheels is a small minigame that challenges the player to pick out two different classes of characters and duke it out against your competitor. You get to spin your wheel three times and whatever shape you have the majority of will influence what your character does. So for example, let's say I roll three squares. Our characters on the square side will be one step closer to attacking. There are many more rules for this game, but I'd say it's more fun to just honestly teach yourself, and that's what I did. Once you defeat all nine champions, you can play against the hardest character yet, the Watchmaker. She comes out swinging with an engineer and a priest, which is a good setup. I kept reading online about how she's the hardest character to defeat, so this will probably take me a few tries minimum and... I beat her first try. Okay, what? I thought she was most difficult. Well, after some extensive research of me watching one YouTube video, I got very lucky actually. The setup she uses is actually completely randomized, so holy crap, yeah, I got lucky. I was able to bypass her entire setup by using the assassin figure, whose attacks go through walls, which completely negates what the engineer can do. Take that, watchmaker, I'm not the best wheels player here. So yeah, wheels is super fun and I recommend trying to defeat all the champions, including her. But overall, the side content was a lot of fun and the main story itself was such a joy to experience. This was by far the most hyped up part of the entire game for me, but was the hype too much? No. If you say it was, then I'll, I'll, I'll cry. 
Nakamoto would be very upset. I mean, look how sad he is now because you said that. Just, wow. You don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, on the surface, it seems that Sea of Stars is just your typical turn-based RPG. It's very far from it. Well, sure, it still contains those classic turn-based elements, like being turn-based. Wow, really great description there. A turn-based game's turn-based. Who would have thought? It spices up the regular combat in a super cool way. If you play Super Mario RPG, you know exactly what I'm about to say. Timed button presses. Wait, 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 don't click on the video. I swear it's more fun than the title suggests. If you want to deal more damage, you have to press the action button just as one of the party members is attacking. Blocking damage also works the same way. Just press that action button right before the enemy attacks you. While timing attacks came easy to me, it was blocking enemy attacks that was actually really challenging. While for some attacks it's predictable, for others I never got the timing down. Like these stupid zombie things. They kept falling on me over and over again. And I was either a little too early or just a little too late. But overall, the time combat system was so cool. And I've never really played a game that had this before. Okay, well, I did play Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, but I was like eight and didn't even know where to go. So I just was in the same area for hours until I gave up. But I'm not counting that one. The characters in Sea of Stars also get their own unique abilities. And that was super cool. While Valir can summon a little crescent moon and use it as a boomerang. Or should I say... Moon ring. Zell can charge at the literal sun and hit all enemies with it. The attention to detail of each action was just so cool, and abilities aren't the only unique thing about Sea of Stars' characters. Each character can learn combos with other party members and use them in battle. It's very reminiscent of Chrono Trigger's combo system, which is cool too. While some combos can heal the party, others can do a lot of damage to a certain enemy or even all of them. You can use combos by filling up the combo gauge on the left side of the battle UI, and each combo either uses one, two, or three combo points. Once you use enough combos, a rainbow gauge around the combo gauge will fill up, letting any party member of your choosing unleash a powerful ultimate attack. I always looked forward to using the ultimates, and I loved seeing what everyone's did. Combos and ultimates also came super useful in one of my favorite aspects of this game, boss battles. No turn-based RPG is complete without them, and Sea of Stars delivered. Not only were the designs so cool, but each boss also had very unique attacks that you had to learn fast unless you wanted a game over screen. They also weren't that difficult, and only a handful I lost against and had to redo, which really says something since I'm not the greatest at boss battles in other games. The bosses were a perfect balance of easy yet challenging, and it made for some very enjoyable fights. Pivoting off bosses for a second, the environment and overall world of Sea of Stars was just simply amazing. I normally hate exploring in games as I start to get stressed out from feeling like I'm not accomplishing the main quest, but Sea of Stars was just different. I loved going to every single area and just looking around, trying to find the hidden chest and rainbow conches. I also tried trophy hunting this game and I got pretty far, almost getting the platinum for it. Well, I didn't actually get the platinum as I had to do New Game Plus for a couple of trophies as I got locked out of unlocking them my first playthrough, I still had a lot of fun trying to get them all. But back to the environments. I quickly noticed the world was a little small, but I honestly grew to appreciate it. Sometimes games can have too big of a world, looking at you, Starfield. But Sea of Stars left me feeling way more familiar with it, and a lot of the time I knew exactly where each island was without even having to pull up the map. So, yeah. Sea of Stars is some of the greatest gameplay, bosses, and map exploration I've ever experienced in a video game. It's just such a treat. While I love the characters, I just can't say that they're my favorite. While I love seeing the party go through this crazy adventure together, it, to me, felt almost forced. I don't know exactly how to word it, but the relationships between the cast just didn't feel that genuine. While the friendship between Valir, Zale, and Garl was great, once other characters started to join in, it just kind of felt like they were just there for convenience sakes. It sucks too, because I think that had they been more fleshed out, it would have been just perfect. While I have my gripes with the main party, the antagonist and side characters were just awesome. Well, I don't want to say much about the villains as I'm not here to spoil anything. I thought they were written perfectly, and their motivations to be evil were laid out for the player to see, which I really liked. Some games try to hide their antagonist's motivations, and I never have really understood that, so for Sea of Stars to not do that made me super happy. The side characters, as mentioned earlier, were also great. Malcolm Mudd is by far my favorite character. Clearly, since, I mean, I said you would make him upset earlier, just because of his story. He's the only mole in the entire village of mole people to know how to use magic. Because of this, the rest of the moles practically shame him, so Malcolm Mud hides in a cave with his pet Rocky to avoid them. After clearing the cave and talking to Malcolm Mud, the villagers realize that they have treated him really badly and they work on their attitudes and behaviors. 
Other side characters are really fleshed out too, just like Malcolm Mudd, but he's my favorite also because of his design. I mean, look how adorable he is. Hi, sisters. But overall, while the main party I wasn't the biggest fan of, it's those villains and side characters that more than make up for it. Remember in a previous video that I had said that Final Fantasy 16 was my game of the year? Yeah, well, CSR is a leg up over it in terms of music. So ha, take that FF16. I hadn't even realized that Yasunori Mitsuda composed the game's soundtrack, so no wonder I liked it so much. In case you aren't familiar with his work, he composed music for Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, and Xeno Gears. He was definitely the right fit for Sea of Stars as every song, whether that be your more action-oriented ones or your more relaxed ones, will leave you just humming along after just a few listens. I know I definitely was. I mean, just listen to this battle theme. While I write these reviews, I like to play the OSTs in the background to get truly immersed, and I hummed or danced along to practically every song that I played, and that's really saying something. Sea of Stars ate and left no crumbs. Besides a killer soundtrack, the art style was just perfect too. I love games that have that classic pixel art art style, say that five times fast, and Sea of Stars scratched that itch. There was just so much detail, from the characters themselves to the beautiful open world, that I actually had to stop multiple times just to look at it in awe. Not only did it have an amazing pixel art art style, sometimes at pivotal moments, a 3D animation would play, and those were so cool too. I was not expecting that going into the game, and they were such a welcome treat. They were relatively short, sadly, but from what we got, they were beautiful, and I'm very thankful they were included. Sea of Stars is some of my favorite pixel graphics I've ever seen, and I'm so thankful they went with that art style. Sea of Stars is an absolutely beautiful game, literally and metaphorically. With some of the best gameplay I've ever played mixed with fun side content, an awesome soundtrack, and a great art style to boot, you seriously need to play this game. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars, with only failing being the main party's interactions with one another. If you're looking to play Sea of Stars but you aren't too sure about it, I implore you to play it. It's the best turn-based RPG I've played this year, and I don't regret trying it out at all. Thanks for watching my latest review. Do you agree with my thoughts on Sea of Stars? Let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out a lot. I noticed that only 2.2% of all my viewers are actually subscribed, so let's change that. If you have any suggestions for games I should review next, be sure to drop it in the comments as well. With that, I'll see y'all in the next video.